Hello. In this video, we are going to take a look at the primary functionalities of the Eclipse Cargo Tracker application. Eclipse Cargo Tracker is part of the EE4J umbrella projects and it is closely related to the Jakarta EE specification. The objective of the project is basically to demonstrate key architectural blueprints, namely design patterns like domain driven design and how they can be implemented using Jakarta EE. So the application essentially tracks uh, shipments of cargo across the globe. Uh, it is just complex enough to show uh, enough of the nuances of domain-driven design and some of the other design patterns that are demonstrated in the application. There are several interfaces uh, in the application. I won't show them all, but I will show you a representative set. The uh, three key ones you can see uh, that are web-based are, are listed here. So first to the pub is a public tracking interface. So we'll take a look at that first. If you click on this link, it'll take you to our website uh, that looks something like this. So this is intended for people that are tracking their cargo and they can take a look at the status of their cargo as the cargo progresses through the system. So let's take a look at ABC123, for example. Uh, and we can see some information about uh, where the um, cargo currently is, uh, in that it is supposed to be arriving in Helsinki soon and that it is currently waiting in New York uh, and it is going to be loaded onto a voyage in New York. We can also take a look at uh, the tracking history of this cargo uh, and sort of what has happened to this cargo so far. Uh, and there's also a convenient map showing you the destination, which is Helsinki, the source, which is Hong Kong, and the current destination or last known location, uh, and that is uh, New York. So that is the tracking interface. Uh, the other interface is the administrative interface, and that is intended for people that are managing uh, all of these bits of cargo and all of these uh, all of these different voyages. And once you log on into the dashboard, there's a number of functionality here. Uh, but one of the key bits of functionality is that it basically will tell you uh, all of the cargo information that is currently in the system, uh, whether it's uh, routed or not routed. Uh, or even whether it has been uh, recently claimed. Uh, so basically the shipping is done and the person that uh, the cargo is supposed to go to, well, they've got that cargo. So you can do a bunch of different things, but uh, the one that we're going to do now is essentially uh, to take a look at each of these bits of cargo. So let's take out ABC123, uh, and this will tell you more details about the cargo uh, other than the tracking information that is in the public tracking interface. So this basically tells you what the origin, destination, and arrival deadline is, and also which itinerary uh, is this cargo committed to. Uh, we can also book a cargo, so let's go ahead and do that next. So we'll book a cargo, and let's say that the, we have a bit of cargo uh, going from Shanghai to, uh, let's say, uh, Tokyo. And that should be a relatively short voyage, so we'll say that it will arrive uh, somewhere on December 8th. And that is about 38 days, and that should be enough for this cargo. So we'll go ahead and book the cargo. So once you book the cargo, it is listed as not routed. Uh, so once you are ready to route the cargo, you hit the little uh, globe button here. So we'll go ahead and hit that. And you'll see that there's a number of ways uh, that this cargo could uh, get uh, from one point to the other. We'll just pick the very first one here and that will commit the cargo to this itinerary. So if you go back to the dashboard, now we'll see that uh, we have another uh, routed cargo and that's our cargo there and that is its uh, committed itinerary. Uh, there's also a live map version of the dashboard. So this is a live map version of the dashboard. So you can see that there's a number of uh, things that are here. It'll, it's showing you all of the bits of cargo that are there. So here's, for example, uh, which you can take a look at ABC123 that is currently in New York. Uh, it is uh, ultimately bound for Helsinki um, and it was origin is in New York uh, or other origin was in uh, Tokyo, I believe. Uh, and then there is another bit of cargo here that's uh, currently sitting uh, in Melbourne. That was its last known location, but it is on board a carrier right at this moment. Uh, I believe it is bound for Helsinki. So next bit of uh, interface that you want to take a look at is a mobile event tracker. And this is basically what allows you to change the status of cargo beyond simply booking it. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So let's go back to our uh, dashboard and see what we want to manipulate. So I think this one is a, is a good one to manipulate. It's in, it's in Melbourne. It's on board some cargo, uh, and it is bound, uh, I believe, uh, for Helsinki next. So uh, 
let's assume that this cargo has now arrived in Helsinki. So we're going to go ahead and update its status. So as we can see, it's a cargo. Uh, this is a cargo ID. We'll take, we'll pick a cargo ID. We'll say that it is it is arriving in Helsinki. And we'll say that the event type is of type onload. And we know what the voyage is that it's currently on uh, is 001S. And uh, it is due to arrive on the 5th. So let's say it was unloaded sometime after that. So let's say it was unloaded on the 6th. So that is sufficient information. And we can go ahead and submit it. And we can go back to, to the live map, for example, and now we'll see that the cargo is in fact in Helsinki, it's no longer in Melbourne. So you can also do this in bulk. There is a bulk processing interface that uh, uh, handles all of the events uh, sort of all at once. Uh, and we'll take a look at that next. So le let's go back to our, our dashboard. Uh, and let's see, uh, we'll manipulate ABC123 here. So I'll show you how that manipulation happens. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, and put the bulk processing file where it belongs. So I'm going to the, into the temp interface. Here is my file. I'll take a, I'll show you the file in just a moment. But first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and copy it over to the uploads directory. Okay. So now let's take a look at this file. And as you can see, it is uh, simply a CSV file comma separated file uh, and it is depicting each uh, type of event so there's a load and an unload and then and another load and unload uh, and if you go look at the cargo details for abc123 it largely maps to this itinerary so let's take a look at to see whether our bulk processing was done okay so now looks like our processing was complete uh, looks like uh, we just process all of the files. So let's go up a minute and make sure that is in fact the case. Yes, it looks like it processed our file. We can go look at the file system and make sure that is in fact the case. And we indeed see that there, the file no longer exists and has been archived. So we can go back to our interface now and reload our live map. And we are, as we are able to see, ABC123 is now in Helsinki. All right, so there is a couple of other interfaces to the application. Uh, namely, you can also take a look at uh, the REST interface as well as explore the REST interface uh, through SOAPY. Uh, and there's also JUnit tests that you can run in the application as well. But that is basically the key functionality in the Cargo Tracker application.